Hi, my name is Leah and today I have our daily reading from Jesus Calling for Kids. Today's reading is called I Am Good. I am good. I am not just good one day and then not so good the next. I am always good. I will always do what is good and best for you. And I am completely good, not just mostly good or 99.9% .9 good. I am light and there is no darkness in me, none at all. So come to me with a thankful heart. Be glad that your life is not at the whim of an imperfect God. Be grateful that you serve a perfect God who only wants the best for you. Expect me to take care of you. There is not a single thing that I cannot give you. Here's the supplies you'll be needing for today's craft. I hope you enjoy the rest of Sunday school. Hello C3 kids, welcome to Sunday school. We're gonna get started with some shout outs, all right? Here they are. Hello Lucas. Hi. Hello Corbin. Hey, Wade. Do it. Two more here. Hi, Jonah. Hi. And hi, Gavin. All right. Well, it is so good to have you all in Sunday school with us. We are going to get started with our lesson, learning about how goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. If you look over here, we have our tree that we've been adding to week after week. It's definitely filling in. This week, we're going to be adding a circle on there about that showing that goodness is a fruit of the Spirit that grows in our lives as we get more and more into the Word of God. So Esther's going to pass out a circle to each one of you, and if you would write the word goodness and, the, and your name on it, that would be great. If you're in class, you can pause the video and do that there. And if you've been making a tree at home, you could do that. While all of these kids are writing, maybe you can get ready for our Bible story by thinking about who your neighbors are. How would you describe your neighbors? Hmm. Do you have any neighbors that live close to you? Yeah, we have one neighbor that lives kind of across the field from us, but we live kind of in the country, so they're not very close to us. Yeah, that happens when you live in the country, I guess. <laughs> but they have really cute rabbits. Ooh. So. so sometimes neighbors are people that live close to you and sometimes not. If you finish with writing on your circle, you can hand them to Esther and she's going to add them to our tree. It sure is getting full. Oh, yeah. All right, are you finished with yours? Perfect. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, add those ones up there. Today our Bible story is coming from Luke 10, and we're going to be learning more about goodness, and we'll see how Jesus talked about being a good neighbor, because he knew that neighbors aren't only people that live close by. But before we get started in our Bible story, I want us to think about the word good. We are talking that goodness is a fruit of the Spirit, but good, good doesn't always mean just what we think it means. Mirwan might ask, mm, how was your day at school today? And even if nothing interesting happened, you might say, oh, it was good. So I'm going, we're gonna start by seeing what you all think is good or bad. No matter where you're watching this from, I want you to participate in the vote. I'm going to list off some different things, and I want you to vote if it's good or if you think it's bad. There's no right or wrong answer. Alrighty, here's the first one. Pizza. Do you say pizza's good or bad? Looks like most people in class here think give pizza a thumbs up. What about video games? Are video games good or bad in your opinion? Oh, we kind of got a, a little middle over here. What are you all saying? What about broccoli? I like broccoli. It's good for you. Oh, Cheyenne says no. <laughs> Homework. 
Maybe, maybe football? Cookies? What are you all saying at home? Do you like puppies? What about snakes? Do you give those a thumbs up? Thumbs down? Thunderstorms? Oh yes. What about bedtime? Or your friends? Last one. How many people out there love pop quizzes? Probably not me. So there were some answers that we all agreed that, that they were good and everyone here agreed that video, they gave video games a thumbs down. Mm, but for some of the things, we got a little bit of both. So what does it really mean when we talk about goodness? First of all, since goodness is a fruit of the Spirit, it means that goodness comes from God. And it's more about just how pizza tastes or whether we did well or not on a test. When we talk about goodness, sometimes the, word, the comment, be good, might come to your mind. And that might include following some rules. So before we get into our Bible story, I want you to think about what are some rules that people, that you think of when you think of being good. Esther is going to write them down here on the paper. And if you're at home, maybe you can think of some rules that are in your house that you are that you follow when you're being good. Does anyone in here have an example of a rule they follow when they think of being good? Yeah, Cheyenne, what do you think of? Doing your homework from school. Oh, doing your homework from school. That's important. Anybody else? Maya? Um, doing the dishes. Hmm, especially when your mom or dad ask, huh? What about you ladies? Yes? Cleaning your room. Keeping your room clean. That'll work. Mm-hmm. Picking up your garbage. Picking up garbage, especially if you're out at a park, right? Those are all things that people might say are about being good. We're going to put them in this bag that's going to be our rule bag. We'll be coming back to this later. Goodness, God's goodness is a purity of our heart. It's not about just doing these good things. It's a character trait that results in good things. God's goodness is kind of like this. You'll see in a moment. Mm, Esther, will you put your backpack on, please? We're going to fill up this backpack with a few things. The first is going to be this blanket here. Why do I need a blanket in my backpack? Well, God's goodness is comforting when life is hard. Kind of like this blanket could be. It oh, is yeah, soft. Oh yeah, it is. Let's add that to the backpack. Mm. We'll add this ointment to the backpack. When you have a cut, what's so good about ointment? Well, God's goodness means healing in our lives, to our hearts and to our bodies. So we'll put this in the goodness backpack. Can't forget about some bandages. Why do I need those? Well, bandages prevent dirt and germs from getting into your cuts. God shows us his goodness by protecting us. So we'll add these to the mm. backpack. We're gonna add a bandage to the backpack too. What for? Well, if you might need one of these bandages to wrap around a part of your body if, it, if it's gotten hurt or injured. God's goodness is wrapped around us all the time. Let's add this. There's a few more things we're going to add. A donkey. That's a lot of stuff. Why do we need a donkey? Well, we have cars, so we don't really need to use a donkey. But in the Bible, donkeys were used to carry people so that they didn't have to walk far distances. God's goodness lifts us up and eases the burdens in our lives. Here you go. Hopefully it's not too heavy. And last but not least, some money. Why do we need money again? Well, we need money to buy food and shelter. We're gonna put the coins in the backpack because God is our provider and he is always good to us. All right, we've got a lot of things in our goodness backpack. We're gonna zip that up. God's goodness is bigger than the way we usually think of just the word good. 
It's full and wonderful. Oh, yeah. I kind of like this backpack here. We're going to see how God's goodness comes out through our lives because goodness is the fruit of the Spirit. Let's get ready to act out this week's Bible story. This is the story of the Good Samaritan found in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 30. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away. They left him half dead. Now a priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw it, passed by on the other side. And the Samaritan was left there. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds. He put on ointment and a bandage. Then he took his own donkey and put the man on him and brought him to an inn where someone could take care of the injured man. The next day, the good Samaritan took out two coins and gave them to the innkeeper. The good Samaritan said to look after him, and when he returned, he would pay for any of the expenses that the injured man had occurred. Now, which of these people do you think showed the goodness of God? What did you think of the Bible story? Jesus told this story to make a point. In fact, some of the people he talked to got a little offended. You see, the priests and the temple assistants loved to follow the rules. They thought they had goodness down. But when it came to the command being good, they lived it out. But when it came to the purity of heart, they missed the mark. When the people in, Jesus, in the story just walked by the injured man, that, that actually fit within their rules at the time. The man might have looked dead, he definitely was bloody, and the religious leaders were following the rules to not touch him and getting, becoming unclean. So they just walked by with their little bags of rules, and they thought that that was goodness. And why didn't the rules show goodness in this story? Well. Goodness isn't just about acting good and following the rules. It's about the fullness of God's good character being formed in our hearts. The Samaritans weren't known as being good people. No one would have expected Jesus to make a Samaritan the hero of a story. And yet today we call this story the story of the good Samaritan. That's because goodness doesn't come from us. Goodness is a fruit of the spirit and it comes from Christ. It doesn't happen by just being good and carrying around a bag of rules. It doesn't come from really trying hard or always doing the right thing. It only can come from God. Just like we share the goodness of God when we put it in the backpack and we can put it into action. Think of the things we put inside of this backpack to show God's goodness. What's a way you can pull from God's goodness this week and show goodness to someone else? The Samaritan was prepared to help the injured man because his bag was full of God's goodness. When the injured man needed help, the rules and the priest and the temple assistants, they weren't doing any good. But the Samaritan was full of God's goodness and was able to stop and help. Maybe you don't think of yourself as a really good person. That's okay. You're just like the Samaritan, maybe not known for being good, but God has given you a backpack full of his goodness and he is ready to help you show goodness to others in your life. Goodness is a fruit of the spirit and it comes from God so we can show his goodness to other people.
let's remember that this week as we're out and about. We're going to end Sunday school to, together with a prayer. Would you fold your hands and bow your heads? Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you are good and that you put goodness inside of us. Thank you for filling us with your goodness. Help us to show your goodness to those in our lives today. Bless everyone who's watched Sunday School. In your name, amen. Here are the supplies you'll be needing for today's craft. Some index cards, a stapler, some stickers, and markers or crayons. Today, we'll be making coupon books. Figure out who do you want to make a coupon book for. Cheyenne, who do you think you're going to make a coupon book for? Um, my mom. Your mom? Maybe you can make it for a neighbor, a friend, a parent, or a teacher. Think of four to five things that you could do for that person. You could maybe clean the yard, shovel snow, give them a hug, or even a back rub. Or you could read to them. Make a separate card for each thing. Decorate them with stickers and markers. And you can make the cover with a stapler. How is doing these things showing God's goodness? Because it comes from the heart, not from following the rules. Goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. Jesus showed us that goodness happens when we help and care for other people. Give your coupon books to the person you thought of and be ready to show God's goodness when they redeem the coupons. Hey Wanda, long time no see. What have you been up to? I haven't seen you in weeks. I know, Jennifer. I met this new girl. We've been hanging out a lot. She and I have joined a gang. I mean a club. Did you start to say you joined a gang? No, I didn't mean that. I made a mistake. It's a club. A really cool club. Hmm. So what's the name of your club? It's called Sticks and Stones. Do you want to join up with us? Well, that depends on a lot of things. Like, what do you do in this club? And do you do good things for other people? Not really. We mainly just hang out and trade ideas of how to get something for nothing. Like, we don't want to work and don't want to go to school anymore. No school? No work? Nope, not anymore. But Wanda, do your parents approve? Wait, I know the answer to that. Your parents would never approve. They've always been pretty strict with you getting your schoolwork done on time and checking it over for accuracy. They don't know about me joining this new get I mean club. They think I'm still going to school. <laughs> that sounds bad to me. In Sunday school, we learned that we are to obey our parents, to honor them. That means we don't lie to them and don't sneak around. I don't want to join your club or gang. That would not be good. But we're not hurting anyone. We just hang out. Maybe you think you're not hurting anyone, but you are hurting yourself. A good education is priceless. You will find it very difficult to succeed in life without an education. Yeah, I've been told that. Now I just want to hang out and have fun. School is boring. Honestly, I'm surprised at that. You've always been a good person and got good grades in school. I thought you would really go far in life because you were such a good student. You really mean that? You really think I'm a good person? Absolutely! You have always done good things for other people. 
like watching your little brother and helping your grandma around her house. You even help out with Sunday school, and you have given of your time without expecting anything in return. And you always did those things with a smile, a happy heart even. So what gives? Why the sudden change? I actually do enjoy all those things. I like being helpful and the feeling I get when I'm inside when I'm doing it. I, I guess I joined this club. It really is a gang. I just wanted to fit in and be cool. I wanted my new friends to like me, to accept me into the gang. But Wanda, that's exactly what we were taught in Sunday school, that we should not go along with the crowd just to fit in, especially when they're up to no good. I know you're right, Jennifer. I remember learning that. And we don't practice being good for a reward or in order to get something back. We are good because Jesus is good and we try to be like him. When we are good, we shine the light of Jesus all around. You know what? What? I am a good person, and I want to continue to do good things. I'm going to quit the gang and come back to school. I know I'll have schoolwork to make up, but only for a short time. I am so glad you talked some sense into me, or I'd have a whole lot more schoolwork to make up. That's great! Jennifer, you are a good person and a good friend. You're the kind of friend I want to hang around with all the time. This reminds me of the Sunday school lesson on the fruit of the Spirit, goodness. Goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. Thanks for tuning into Sunday School this week. We'll see you next week. Bye! Bye! The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it, you can't be a fruit of the spirit Cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana The fruit of the spirit's not a banana You wanna be a banana? You might as well hear it, you can't be a fruit of the spirit Cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love and joy, peace, spaces, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, spaces, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, spaces, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. If you wanna be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. If you wanna be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay! Everybody knows that grapes come in bunches! So everybody get in big bunches! The fruit of the spirit's not a grape! The fruit of the spirit's not a grape! You wanna be a grape? You might as well hear it, you can't be a fruit of the spirit Cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness.
Man, it's been a night for me.